Okay, so here you are, still living in the Bronx, Cocaine City DVDs, getting a little bit of buzz. Then in 2003, you had a situation, mm -hmm. a serious one. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I think I think I was I, I think I spoke about it on your shit. What about yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, can let's go let's let's go ahead and um, no, I think I was just get, getting too too big. So basically, it was almost like the Nipsey situation. You know what I'm saying? I was getting I was getting bigger than my bridges, and I was still living in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, I think and and I was making money. People and I was making money. I was I was I was you know I was bragging around the wrong people, mm -hmm. and I think um, it was. Uh, uh, one night that I got lined up. You know, leaving I, the studio. Yeah, leaving the studio. I got lined up by these two guys. I got shot, and one of them died. And mm -hmm. you know, and and that night was 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 one of them nights that made me realize, like you know, I could never be too accessible. You got shot in the head. Yeah. Where? In the back of my head, right here. Okay. Did it just graze your head? No. Nah. It actually went into your head. Yeah. They went in and it came out through the top, some shit like that. It went through your actual skull. Yeah. Did it hit your brain at all? I don't know. I don't know. If I, I don't know. But I mean, was there any sort of like brain damage? Or I know. I, I knew it was, I was stapled up for like for like a long time. But you got lucky because a yeah, slightly yeah. different angle, a couple of degrees over. Yeah. No one would know who French Montana is. Man, let me tell you something. You'd it's, have a grieving it's, mother, grieving uh it's so many It's so many blessings that, you know, Allah helped me through. You know, but that 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 that's that's definitely one of them. Well, and you actually got set up by someone you knew. Yeah. Do you still is this person still around? The guy who set you up? Um I'm not saying name him. I'm just <laughs> I'm just asking you if this person's still around. Well, when 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 the situation happened, one of the guys died, so I left it there. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Did that completely change your life? Because had you been you hadn't been shot before? No, it just it just it just made me realize. It just made me realize that I can never be accessible. You know what I'm saying? Like I people can never see me when they want to see me. Mm. You know what I mean? I gotta see people when I when I when I want to see them. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you just gotta move on your own time, and nobody can get in touch with you. It's like you can't you can't make money and go back to where you came from where everybody was broke with you. I feel like that's 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 never that never equals to a positive outcome. Do you feel you know, like for example, I've interviewed a lot of people since our last yeah. last time, like Shaka Singor. He got shot. And he got PTSD. Mm -hmm. And then the next time, you know, he unlike you, he, he went right back on the block and started hustling again. Yeah. And he was paranoid. He he was didn't want to get shot again. So yeah. when a drug deal started going a little weird and he felt like the guy might pull out on him, he pulled out and killed him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Went to prison for it. Yeah. Got out and wrote a book and went on yeah. Oprah or whatever. But but we talked about that where it was just like when you get shot once, you don't want to get shot again. You know, me yeah. and OJ the Juice Man had the same kind of conversation. Like, yeah. You're you're quick to pull out because you just don't want to get shot again. Yeah. So did you feel that level of paranoia? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I rode around with a vest and a gun on me for like the next next five years after that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just, I, I would ride around so, with so many guns on me that shot them my boy's school. You know Scoop do? Yeah. He just, he borrowed one of my cars. He's like, he, he need to go to fucking North Carolina. And he goes, he drove all the way to North Carolina. And he called me and he was like, he like, yo, bro, you know you left the gun like inside the vibe and it was like, but that's how it was, like mad situations like that where everywhere I, I was, I needed a gun. But once you get shot and you get skinny and you go through that thing and paranoia and you traumatize, it's just I just think that it's just it's just normal, you know what I'm saying, for you to for, for, for you to think like that. You know, because you just realize your life ain't yours and, and, and you better off, you know, get caught with it than without it.